Three working stiffs, space-faring geologist types, the ones that travel in rocket ships, are lost millions, billions, trillions of miles away. Low on fuel, they risk everything, landing on a random asteroid with two suns. In a stroke of luck, it has oxygen, gravity, and even farms, an earthly suburban neighborhood. It's populated with mannequins. It's a story not anything we've seen before. This episode was written by Charles Beaumont and directed by Douglas Hayes. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. And kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Now, shoot an arrow into the air. Where it lands, we don't know where. It's an elegy. It is the year 2185, and astronaut, geological surveyors, Myers, Weber, and Kirby are low on fuel far, far from Earth. They make an emergency landing on a random asteroid that miraculously has an Earth-like atmosphere and gravity. The marooned astronauts discover they landed on a patch of Earth-like property, farms, hotels, and a town hall. However, they are decorated by human-like mannequins in a variety of poses. Even dogs are not spared from being mimicked. The set decorations range from casual to out of place with no common theme. The two suns in the sky convince the three that they are far from Earth. The mystery is answered when a human-like automaton is activated. Its name is Jeremy Wickwire, something that is often repeated to the confused castaways. Wickwire explains he is the automated caretaker for Happy Glades, an exclusive, if not remote, cemetery where the departed can enjoy eternal sleep in a fantasy setting. Other than a modern 1960s theme, there is Egyptian world, Roman world, even a West world. They are inside in an era in the heights of creature comforts, presuming before the global war of 1985. Wickwire expects a trade of information and knowledge with the universally lost human visitors. He asks, what would be their greatest wish? All three agree it would be back in their spacecraft heading for Earth. In celebration, Wickwire proposes a toast for a quite delicious drink. Salute. Quite unfortunate for the three astronauts, Wickwire had poisoned them. Described as an eternifying fluid, it kills their victims but preserves them for everlasting life, while permanently dead, that is. Wickwire gives a hollow, machine-like apology and says, where they are men, and while there are men, there can be no peace. Myers, Weber, and Kirby fall and die on the floor. They are soon propped up in their cemetery attraction. They're no different than any other piece of furniture. The moral of Elegy was humans are harbingers of doom, and there can be no peace other than peace of the dead wherever they roam. It may have been punishment for the World Cataclysmic War of 1985 that we know little about. Everything that came after it was of no consequence. It's a little on the nose and offers little in storytelling. Could there be another theme? Themes can be identified by clues that repeat themselves. It can be in wardrobe, props, or lines of dialogue. Red rum. Red rum. In comedy, there is something called a running gag. In Elegy's example, a line of dialogue that is repeated often. The astronauts have trouble remembering or saying Jeremy Wickwire's name. Look, Mr. Uh, Wickwire. Wickwire. Mr. Uh, Wickwire. Uh, that'd make you a bit on the elderly side, wouldn't it, Mr. Uh, Wire Wick? Wick Wire. <laughs> However, Elegy is not a comedy. We're not laughing at the astronauts' trouble with pronunciations. 
While it becomes frustrating, there is no relief or catharsis from saying Rick Wire's name. He is not Rumpelstiltskin. The astronauts are withholding Rick Wire from his human mimicked identity. The episode foreshadows the distance of moral equality between humans and robots. They will not give dignity to him with a human name. It is quite possible that the advanced technology of artificial, sentient fooling robots was lost because of the war and never recreated. It would make sense that the normal reaction of humans of 2185 to be oblivious, if not intolerant, of ancient civilizations and its technology coming to life. This is 1960, and not yet the time debating what it means to be human. We already had one episode, The Lonely, that brutally sets the presumed superiority of humans over robots. That is why it serves so well to have the men crawl on the floor in front of the robot overlord. Now it's time for some alternative theories. If we examine the timeline, the lore may make a little more sense. The episode was aired in 1960. According to its universe, not just space travel, but interstellar space travel is commonplace and commoditized by 1973. Private companies harvest and construct a small town on an asteroid in another solar system, only 655 million miles away, if using 1960s standard of measurements. Epiglades was founded in 1973, presuming with the aid of human-like robots. Another great leap in technology that gets a no-never-mind explanation. Because of the nuclear war that happened on Earth, Wickwire had not received any customers since. He has been mostly deactivated for 200 years, aside from an occasional dusting. An important clue we must examine, Wickwire asks about the nuclear war he expected to happen. Tell me, did they ever have that atomic war? Yes, in 1985. Wickwire only gets a confirmation of it from the astronauts, present year 2185. Since Wickwire only gets his information from those visiting from Earth, the Cold War was a hot kitchen table topic. Take a look at Happy Glade's customers. The farmer, fisherman, mayor-elect, poker player, either one or both of the couple, and the beauty contestant winner or customers. The rest, as Wickwire explains, are mannequins. What do we make of the customers? Why, they were part of a doomsday cult. Some are mature, but do they all look like they died of old age or natural causes? Remember, it takes consumption of the internifying fluid to keep their preservation. What would this mean? No customers arrived at Happy Glades by an interstellar coffin. They all arrived alive. We go back to Wickwire's first assumption that they were from the home office on Earth as newest clients, back in business. If you recall, the pending war was all the talk. Happy Glades customers wanted to forever live in what was their modern era, and not because it kept production costs down. Sure, it would have been nice to see Roman World. Wickwire called it creature comforts. We call it the height of modern marvels before it was all lost and blown away. This was the Twilight Zone's idea of what 1984 would look like. The customers of Happy Glades were so scared there would be no tomorrow. They traded everything to freeze in a moment of fantasy, their greatest wishes. Funny how not one customer wished for peace on Earth. Elegy was based on the short story written by Charles Beaumont, who also wrote the screenplay. You can easily read the story online for free too. The television episode is pretty faithful to the print, once they reach the asteroid of Happy Glades, that is. In the book, the spaceship once carried 30 men to escape the Great War that had not started yet. 
after a stop to relocate on Mars, and the details are ambiguous. The Martians rejected them after thinning some of their numbers. Being low on fuel and experiencing other difficulties, the number of their crew is down to six. With fantastic luck, they discover a city on an uncharted asteroid. They decide to land. From here, it's very close to the episode. The crew sees many large-scale dioramas. A little man comes to life. His name is Mr. Greypole instead of Wickwire. Greypole is also a robot, but has human origins turned cyborg. The book does have its quirky tone, something the episode tried to reproduce. Believe it or not, the book's version of Wickwire is more sadistic than his television counterpart. He not only poisons the astronauts, but urges them to climb aboard their ship and get into final position before the internifying fluids kicks in. I had thought out and wrote down my analysis before reading Beaumont's short story of the same name. Some of my theories do bleed through in print. For example, it's really emphasized in the end that Great Pole, the robot, is not described as an it, but a he, especially when he starts acting homicidal. If you read The Twilight Zone Companion by Mark Zickery, you'll learn how Cecil Kellaway, who played Wick Wire and two-time Oscar nominee, saved the episode from being morbid through his performance. Great Pole goes into a long rant about how the cemetery is a final resting place, where its inhabitants can live out or die in their own utopia, because the earth they escaped from was wrought with hate, prejudice, and wars. It also doesn't have any cemeteries, and everyone is cremated. The episode makes that point in one eloquent sentence given by Jeremy Wickwire himself. Because you are here, and you are men, and while there are men, there can be no peace. So, if you follow my videos analyzing the Twilight Zone, you may have picked up, I think, outside the mainstream sometimes. This is why there's anxiety, rage, and disbelief on occasion. My problem with Elegy is the three protagonists were doomed from the start. They had no fuel, presumed no food, and no hope. They show up, meet a robot, and get poisoned. Even if Wickwire didn't poison them, what were they going to do? Start farming? The episode isn't bad. After accepting why the astronauts arrive on the asteroid, there's an odd mystery, walking from set to set, full of mannequins, actually real-life actors, trying to stand still and not blink. Here's my next problem. This is Where Is Everybody meets I Shot an Arrow Into The Air. Astronauts stranded on the asteroid, walking through empty, liminal sets, only to be victimized through the most evil traits of man. The End if we want to discuss the source material, where they are refugees trying to escape a war before it happens, that's third from the sun. A part of me wished they would have played up the lore on 22nd century Earth, comparing more in detail what they left that was real with what they see in Happy Glades, which was not. However, the episode made its terse point. They're human, and that's reason enough. The punchy music in the end, in an attempt to make this a comedy, doesn't work and is out of place with me. It clearly puts tonal distance from the short story, but it's an unsatisfying mic drop. While this episode isn't as terrible as Escape Clause, it's not as fun to analyze as The Fever. The short story is a recommendation, but I can't give Elegy more than a generous two dimensions out of five. It does have a couple tropes tag them, it's not easy being an astronaut, and human mimics. This is Mr. G of Synergy leaving you with these final words. Don't drink the formaldehyde inside a funeral home, not even in the twilight zone. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.